1928 when Tommy Lucchese was just 29 years old. He and his future brother-in-law, Joseph Joe Palisades Rosado, were arrested for the murder of Louis Sarasulo. Sarasulo was a Harlem hood who the pair were accused of shooting right on an East Harlem street corner in view of his wife and sister. In fact, it was Sarasulo's wife and sister who were the ones who had filed a police complaint that got Lucchese and Rosado arrested in the first place. But before the case went to trial, both women recanted their earlier testimony, stating that they had been mistaken and didn't recognize Lucchese or Rosado as the killers. Both young mafiosi walked free. Lucchese would experience several similar incidents over the length of his career of eyewitnesses who had very poor eyesight. And with the exception of once being jailed for several years for car theft, Tommy Brown would never again hear cell doors slammed shut around him. Before I continue, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. Tommy Brown had a reputation second only to that of Frank Costello as a master corruptor and political fixer. Lucchese was infamous in his ability to infiltrate government and corrupt politicians, be it at the local level in Tammany Hall, the Democratic political powerhouse machine of its era in New York, or on the state or federal level with congressmen and senators. Lucchese's infiltration and corruption of major industries is legendary. New York's garment industry, the construction industry, trucking and international airport freight are but a few of many that fell victim to his Machiavellan-like machinations. This masterful and artful corruptor truly operated on a level rarely seen in this country. But in Button Guy's opinion, his most pervasive infiltration was that in which he exercised over the garment industry. With the entire New York garment district in his hip pocket, he had dominion over virtually the entire industry nationwide because at the drop of a hat, between his ironclad control of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union and the trucking companies which delivered the garments, which in turn brought many of the largest dress designers and manufacturers under his thumb, he could shut down an entire industry's machines and seamstresses from humming out the dresses and other apparel all Americans wore. Many of his Borgata members had ownership interests of their own in various garment industry-related firms, and were sure Tommy got his occasional envelope from them as a tribute that is customary so as to wet the beak of the bird, so to speak. And while we're on the subject of control and receiving envelopes, which every family boss and hierarchy receives as a matter of course and is entitled to, it is important to note that Tommy Lucchese was well-liked by his rank and file. In fact, let's rephrase that statement. Lucchese was very well loved by his men. Why? Because he was almost singular in his generosity, which is rare in the underworld, especially by bosses toward the disciples. It was a well-known fact amongst the various soldiers of all the other families that he was extremely generous and not at all greedy as far as demanding large percentages of his soldiers' earnings and he even let them dabble as they wished in the highly lucrative narcotics trade, specifically heroin trafficking, both importation and wholesale nationwide distribution of a product that could and did make millionaires out of many of his men. He had a very happy rank and file. The Lucchese family was known as one of the most internally peaceful and profitable brigadas in the entire history of Cosa Nostra. During Lucchese's tenure, the brigada hummed along smoothly and quietly. Of course, decades later, by the late 1980s, under the rule of much less capable men, the family would be shredded to tatters. But that's a story for another day. When Lucchese died in 1967 at the relatively young age of 67, his blood family tried to have a quiet wake and funeral. But his death became a media spectacle with both local and federal agents filming and snapping surveillance pictures of all visitors coming to pay their respects. The newspapers had a field day. And although everyone knew there was heavy surveillance by law enforcement, Tommy Lucchese was such a beloved boss and friend to many that the funeral home and cemetery were jam-packed with the most notorious mafiosi in the tri-state area, top politicians, judges, and even police officials themselves. It was a tribute to his standing in both the underworld and upper world that so many people from varied walks of life came to say their goodbyes. Visit the Button Guys website at www.thenewyorkmafia.com to learn more about Tommy Lucchese's life. You can also check out our other Lucchese family profiles here on Mob Fireside Chat, such as Jimmy Plumeri and the De Palermo Brothers. And please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. Thank you for watching. Until next time.